Hi everybody, thank you for joining us. Just a quick project update. So I had a COVID test, PCR test uh, yesterday, and I'm just waiting for the results. Hopefully tomorrow morning I should get them. I believe I am negative. Uh, I've been testing myself at home using the NHS kits that I brought with me, and I've been negative, no fever, nothing, thank God. So yes, so tomorrow I should have that official uh, release from quarantine and it's been tough uh, you know a few days being quarantined stuck here feeling a bit helpless not being able to get out there and uh, um, get into these meetings but I've made it productive as much as possible I've set up a lot of these meetings and spoken to a lot of different organizations so I've had quite a few zoom calls as well with different NGOs government officials so it's been productive still I've been documenting the trip, so all the way from the UK to the Maldives and my time in quarantine. I've got some camera equipment with me and I'm going to share this with the community. Also, I'm speaking to a, a cameraman tomorrow for a documentary regarding Save Planet Earth. So I'll have an official cameraman with me the whole time, which is fantastic and I'm looking forward to that. In terms of planting trees, yeah, we've got quite a few projects here in the Maldives that I'm working on, namely the One Million Tree Initiative with the government of Maldives and some of the major NGOs over here. But along with that, I'm also talking to other NGOs for other ecology projects such as um, Save the Beach and Blue Marine for ocean cleanups. I'll be sending some pictures and uh, signing some memorandum of understandings and pledge letters for that. And also I am meeting Housing Development Corporation. They are in charge of a large island here. And the beach is completely covered with litter, plastic bottles that get washed up on the shore at high tide. So they have a lot of problem cleaning that beach. So I'll be discussing certain technological uh, solutions with them. So that's going to be towards the end of this week. So yeah, obviously we're still aligning ourselves with organizations and other key partners as we grow and our outreach ability increases. We've got a few other technical advisors on our team. Uh, you can see them on the website. They will help us with emission control calculations and uh, further recycling initiatives that we're going to start with renewable energy. It looks like Imran might have lost his connection. Oh, um, yeah, sorry, I think I just lost you guys there. Uh, with regards to the merchandise that will be available on the website and via the application, the application will be released in the next few days. It's been submitted to Android, uh, uh, to the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. And it can be purchased with SPE and Binance, BNB. So we'll have some more details. I'm sure you've seen me rocking yeah, some yeah. hoodies and some t-shirts and a mask, uh, but there will be a lot more varieties uh, in many, many colors. So I'm looking forward to getting that out. And it's going to be all organic cotton and be environmental friendly. So the initial application, um, there are two applications. The first one is about the tokenomics, the team. There'll be a, a link to pancake swap there, and it's going to be re replaced by our own swap and uh, you'll have the ability to link your wallet to view your holdings and it will include the merchandise store as well and the second app which is a lot more complex and it's the first of its kind will take around just just over a month and there'll be geospatial where you can see the trees using satellite images there'll be drawn and video footage of how the trees are progressing and this is an industry first and we want to just make sure that we're doing it perfectly and we're doing it correctly so pretty excited for that to come out and this app will be utilized mainly by the corporations uh, businesses and nations so we, we can create a subscription model for them that will be a source of revenue for spd in terms of uh, marketing and exchange updates We've got 35k Twitter campaign ongoing. We've got some more YouTube videos coming out, and more TikToks. We've got over five lined up already. We've got some banner ads, and all of the four exchanges 
will be doing marketing for us. Coin Tiger uh, listing is going to be on Wednesday. Uh, it was supposed to be on Monday. It's been pushed as they need to upgrade the servers and they've got so many new accounts and new purchases, which is a really good thing for us. Increase their marketing for us uh, as conversation. It's good news. I mean, it's work, worked out well for us at the end. Um, Hotbit as well. They're still recovering from the attack. And that should be online pretty soon. And we will be listing as soon as they're online. We might even be alongside the Coin Tiger listing. Also, we've got Bitbart. That's been finalized with Rob at the moment. And I think that is slated for approximately two weeks, a fortnight from now. And again, they will be doing a huge amount of marketing for us. Yeah, we have White Bit working out. We're already listed. There's plenty of volume going on. They haven't even really started any marketing for us yet. We're going to be here in about six days on the front page of White Bit. If you check it out right now, I don't know if Hogle is still there, but they were there for like two or three weeks. We're, we're, we're getting that spot now. We're going to be on the first tab of it as well. And we're going to have smart staking. And they're also going to promote us through all, through all their uh, groups as well. They just made a big partnership with uh, the Asian exchange community also, which should bring us new investors as well. Hotbit, we all know what happened there. They got hacked the day we were supposed to list. Our funds are already in there. Nothing was stolen, and they're updating their service. You can check them out on their Twitter. I think they're about ready, actually, to go online. They're already making announcements for next listings and everything. So that should be any day now. We were supposed to go today on Cointiger. Their servers were overloaded, and so they they had to put it off for us today. So we're going to go on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm trying to get Wednesday, and I should be able to confirm that shortly with you guys also. And they, they've already done a bunch of uh, marketing and they're going to they're gonna double down on it because of the, the failure. They're going to get us on the big banner also and do a double shot of the ads that they've already done. And then there's a lot more going on there as well. This hasn't been revealed yet, but we're thinking about doing an AMA with Imran on Point Telegraph in China also. So I'm going to confirm that with them either today or tomorrow. But yeah, we're definitely looking to get into the, the Asian market. I guess all that's left is uh, BitMart, which is going to be the biggest one for us so far. They have basically, I think, between the 20th and the 25th of May is going to be our listing date. And they're going to confirm that to me shortly. So we're going to have the big announcement there. They, they do a lot of marketing before their listings. So that they, they usually do a huge buildup like, like they did with other big coins. So, and I think actually yesterday, Elongate actually listed there and SafeMoon also has been listed there for a while. So, so yeah, it's, it's all coming together. So that, that's, that's about all I got on, on the exchanges. We have one of the web developers here, so he can uh, give some more details on the swap and also the apps and everything that's going on. I'm looking for him here. Asif. Hello, can you guys hear me now? Yep. So now we have a couple of things planned for SP. The first is the Earth Swap. Not really a confirmed name yet. Don't get me on that. But we have a swap platform a plan. It's basically a pancake swap fork. So how it works is pancake swap is an open source platform. So they are cool with anyone copying their code and modifying it in the general public use license. That is the GPL license. So that's what we're doing right now. So the long run probably would be to add more complex features to it. Probably sticking, which is not really confirmed. But for now, we have the basic swap platform which is going to go up in the next coming days hopefully so this will let you swap your bnb to spe or vice versa people want to sell that's up to them i i think rob i was hearing him a couple of minutes ago he was talking about the preset of slippage that will be a part of this we will get that in and as soon as that's released, we will also integrate that to our mobile application. So right now on the mobile app, I don't know a lot of people if they have access to it right now, because it's only on the APK sort of uh, platform base where you have to install it manually, not via the app store, which is not live right now. So the right now it links to the pancake swap embedding interface, but eventually that will be linked to our uh, swap platform itself. So now I think a couple of questions were asked about like what the future of this app is. So we're planning to add as much like as more of stuff that we can as possibly. I'll probably share a Google sheet link. I did share it with one of the admins or the moderators where we have a list of bugs or suggestions or feedbacks link there. If you guys, any of you have checked it out, we did add a couple of new nifty features to the application. One of them is dark mode. Basically that lets you have two sort of more to the application where one is the whole plain white background and another one where it modifies to what system theme you're using and the merge store being linked to the app. Yeah, that's highly a possibility that what we're looking or probably in the future. So once we have the merge store live on like a web platform, we obviously can use those APIs to integrate the same on the mobile blaze platform as well. So we do have a lot planned for this app because we are getting feedback from the couple of people that who uh, like 
did download and install this and give us enough feedback. But once this app goes live for everyone to use on the Play Store and App Store, we'll probably get a broader perspective of what people think and then modify it accordingly. But don't really hold on to this because this is not really the last version. As Imran had, would have mentioned previously, we have a complex one coming out, which really is a state of the art technology where you can track uh, different trees where they're planted, the status and other stuff like that, which will be also used by other organizations. So that's something that's for the long run. But for now, this is what we are trying to uh, release. It's not like we'll stop working on this. Obviously, we'll perfect this to the best we can. I hope that was like detailed enough for uh, everyone to understand what the app uh, is going to do or is looking at in the future. And you mentioned Greta Thunberg. We're treating that very sensitively. We understand that she's you know, a very controversial person and a non personality. And also, her approach is very polarizing. But we are targeting other climate minded activists that are less controversial. But we don't want to put ourselves into any compromising position to the general public where uh, things will get called into question. And most people don't understand the difference between proof of work versus proof of stake tokens. So, with regards to Greta, we are treating it very, very sensitive. We initially started with the Maldives of Sri Lanka because of the low-lying states and they've been very susceptible to rising sea levels. So we thought we'd put most of our efforts here at first. But I am also talking to UNDP in Somalia. We had a Zoom conversation earlier with an NGO in Miami as well, which is another low-lying state. I'm talking to organizations and the government in Turkey, Philippines, Indonesia as well. Eventually, we will get everywhere. I mean, yeah. We're only a month you, old at the moment. Have you been talking to the UN? or has it just been just the UNICEF? Both UNDP, United Nations Development Programme, UNEP, UNICEF, NGOs, presidential offices, forestry departments, environment ministries yes. in five, six different countries, even the army. <laughs> so there's quite a few. Yeah. But, uh, we just want to you know, try and get as many trees out there. And it's not just trees. We are working on other ecology projects like ocean cleanups, beach cleanups, anything to do with carbon sequestration. Someone told me the other day about how Tesla actually sells carbon credits. Have you been thinking of doing that? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. That's in our roadmap. And so we're just working out the mechanism. So we've, we've thought about three different mechanisms. And I'm actually speaking to the Carbon Fund in Sri Lanka to certify our certificates so we can issue certificates and uh, put them on the blockchain in the form of NFTs and then trying to get them paid to CO2 and trade them on a carbon exchange. So yeah, so it's very exciting stuff coming up. The new members uh, to the team, some of their credentials and their pedigree, you know, where they're coming from and what they're they're going to bring to the project. We have a number of PhDs and MBAs on the team and you can find them on the website and they've got their LinkedIn accounts there as well. For example, Professor Waka, he's really at the forefront in his field, energy emission control systems, greenhouse gases, etc. So he's fantastic to have on board. Mr. Iftikhar Buhari, again, he's working on emission control systems, waste management, and waste to energy. So these are sort of projects that SPE get involved in to generate revenue for the community and for SPE. And so, so these are very strategic partners. And I've known these gentlemen for a number of years, and I'm really happy to have them on board. And obviously, we've got Dr. Priyantha as well, solar engineer, pioneer, absolutely fantastic addition to the team. We are actually on the Binance Smart Chain, which is a lot more energy efficient compared to other blockchains. I mean, there's a lot of conflicting information with regards to the energy, whether it's fossil fuel or renewable energy. So this is a study that we are conducting at the moment. So Dr. Priyantha and I are creating a proper academic study for this. Conflict information such as 70% is renewable because they're using geothermal energy, hydropower to run these servers and this mining. But we are not POW, we are POS, which is a lot less energy intensive. On top of that, there are certain things beyond our control, but we do aim to be carbon neutral or even carbon negative by offsetting our emissions. So we are calculating our server costs, our intrinsic and extrinsic server costs, and 
offsetting those emissions by planting trees and other carbon sequestration methods. So some of the calculations and algorithms are based on the website hosting, the, the team, the moderators, the marketing team, our, our laptops, mobile phones, so individually and as a company. So we are calculating the full carbon footprint and we will be offsetting that. And so we can start from, you know, from ourselves first and then hopefully try to get all the way down to the blockchain once we've uh, figured out the total carbon footprint and trying to just get the clarity of exactly how much CO2 is generated. Because there's a difference between CO2 being generated and energy consumption, so there's a, there's a big distinction in that mm -hmm. as well. So, so this will all be on the next white paper. So hopefully uh, you'll have a read of that. Yeah. So, okay, so, yeah. perfect. Yeah. How do you protect the trees after they were planted? Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of SPE, is that we don't just plant trees, we actually monitor the progress. For example, mm. the, the 11,000 trees that we planted in Sri Lanka, it wasn't just money donated to uh, you know, a, a local NGO, which just, and then we forget about it. So we don't do that. We actually vet each community and NGO and we have pledge letters with them. We donate to the saplings and also to, uh, you know, for the monitoring. Uh, for example, these uh, 11,000 trees, which were the kittle trees and the babies and the, the baby plants, the saplings are, are very tasty to animals. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, it's like a maple syrup. So we actually purchased a wire mesh to go around these trees as well. So they are protected from the wildlife and the community there, we've actually provided jobs for them to monitor these and send us pictures periodically. So these are the sort of projects that we are working on. We don't just donate to tree charities and then just forget about it. So we actually do the monitoring and with our application, which will be released in over a month's time, we will have satellite images We'll have geospatial technology in there. We'll have drone footage for these trees in those communities and those areas. So watch out for that. That's actually very, very exciting. I mean, we want to make sure that these saplings take root and grow healthy because that's when they will sequester the carbon. So that's, that's the main thing. And your second question was about low income communities. So like this, these kittle trees and the trees that are in the Maldives, they provide fruit. So that's income generation for the communities, mangoes, coconut, breadfruit, and the ones in Sri Lanka are kittle, which is, and you can make a variety of products from that and they can sell that and generate income for themselves. So that's, those are the kind of projects that, that, that we do. But we're not just about numbers. Uh, we're about making sure that these trees, they grow up to become adults and they're providing a good income to the community. You know, that's, that's what we're all about. And there's a lot, a lot of work goes behind the scenes. So, so most of these uh, communities that we have been working with, they are uh, UN affiliated. So they've been vetted by the United Nations uh, Development Programme. And we also do all the pledge letters with them and we interview them, vet them ourselves, just to make sure that everything is above board and it's 100% uh, donation policy. So it goes straight to the local communities. There's no middlemen. We've stripped out all the middlemen. So, so yeah, so that's, that's the way we work. Hey guys, I think it's been two hours now. Should we just wrap it up? Yeah, definitely. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, hope to do this again soon.